Hello and welcome to the virtual questions and answers session on contributing to LibreOffice. I'm Ilmari Lauhakangas. I'm working for the Document Foundation in development marketing. And we asked for people to send in questions beforehand. Uh, and the only person who sent them was Bogdan Buzea. So <laughs> this session is wholly dedicated to his questions. And uh, I'll start by showing a video where I demonstrate how to binary bisect a regression bug on Windows. And it will take a few minutes. Um, wait a minute. Ah, oh, okay. Now, now I'm getting the right window. Okay, so I guess you're seeing my VLC window right now. So it starts by downloading Git for Windows. And this is a bit new. We usually recommend it to use Sigwin, but now we switch to this because uh, the native Git for Windows is much faster. And here I just untick some stuff that is not necessary for this bisecting work. I choose my favorite editor on Windows. Notepad++. And then I pick this checkout as is commit Unix line endings because this is what is used in um, LibreOffice development. This, this video is reproducing the steps from a tutorial in our wiki. And the video will be uploaded in the wiki at a later point. The tutorial has steps for Linux and Mac OS as well. Or wherever they need some special steps. Here I'm changing the directory to where I have this, um, well, it's a virtual box shared directory. I'm downloading the Git bundle for version 6.1. And now I fast forwarded, I cloned it into a Git repository. Now I remove the bundle. And now I can start uh, the process, I'm checking out the oldest commit and opening this problematic file, which opens just fine in the oldest one. And here I check out the latest commit in the 6.1 repository. And let's see what happens. Okay, so it says general error. And it also has a behavior that it um, I think it crashes. And here I start the bisecting process. I have uh, sped up the video a bit in places where it takes a long time. Here we see we got the bad result. So we say git bisect bad. Then we happen to have the good result. It opened just fine. So I say git bisect good. And now I fast forward the rest of the process. Uh, 
and so what we are left is uh, the blamed commit which is there in the source SHA lines this is what uh, is referring to our our source uh, the the line with commit at the top is referring to this bisecting repository and uh, it, it refers to these compiled uh, binaries. Okay, so that's that. And um, next I will answer the question on how to update a bisecting repository, if I understood it correctly. So I will share Oops, did I share this VLC thing again? I will share my terminal. Okay, now you see the terminal. So the process is to first to git check out on master so you have the latest commit and then it pull let's see what happens okay now it's going to pull all the latest uh, binary commits in this unreleased binary bisect repository but we can leave it downloading there. And then Bogdan was interested in uh, generally the correct steps when checking new bugs and how to use some of these uh, bug fields. So I'm going to share this browser window Mm -hmm. So let's just check out a couple of bugs. So here we have someone complaining about the flat pack version of LibreOffice. Now, if this this is somehow specific to flat pack, uh, we we don't track flat pack issues in our Bugzilla. So we refer people to this GitHub repository for the Flatpak package. I will remove this whiteboard needs commenting. It, it is also removed automatically, but, but just to avoid some spam. And I will write So I advise the reporter to open a new issue in the GitHub repository and I change the status to resolved moved uh, kind of anticipating that this person will create the report in the other place. Okay. And then we have a draw bug and I have tested this bug beforehand. This is actually a bug, so this is not an enhancement. I will change the severity field to minor and it's minor because this bug is about um, getting to the text formatting options for several text boxes at once and you can get there if you go through the format menu but 
if you right click on your selected text boxes there will be no text of, uh, menu item in the context menu so this is something specific to the context menu so i will change the status to new and write um, reproduced or I try to find the right words Now I'll paste using this Chrome extension. I will paste my version info. I'll remove the whiteboard stuff. And then I'm just going to look for a nice meta bug. I will type context. And I'm seeing here is a meta bug for context menu bugs and enhancements. So I think it's pretty safe to pick that one. And I put the meta bug number in the blocks field. Right. And actually, the summary needs some tweaking. I think that's good. Right on. And that's saved. You can see in the history all the fields that were changed. And then Bogdan was interested in how to search for duplicates. And um, here we have a calc bug, which I also tested beforehand. It is about uh, doing some action for an object. It can be an image or a shape. Uh, through the right-click context menu and then the mouse cursor uh, will stay like this as the reporter says it stays a grabbing hand but for me on on Linux it stays like a um, uh, four-pointed arrow so we can try searching for this Let's pick calc and uh, try to find something. All right, in the summary contains all of the strings, image and cursor. Nothing, it's just the same bug. Then I try image context absolutely nothing let's try shape cursor no just the same bug it happened to have the same words shape context 
nothing. And we can even try um, unticking the the open box indicator here. So we choose searches for closed ones as well. Nothing there. So I think we can be pretty safe or safely say that there has not been a report created for this beforehand. Whoops, I switched to the wrong tab. Okay. Uh, so let's let's just uh, deal with this. I tested this also on Windows and back to 3.3.0. So I say inherited. I changed the operating system to all because of the Windows testing. Then I will change. I think we could retain these. Also tested with the charts. Uh, I don't know if the summary could be somehow made more clear according to the background. Uh, And actually, this this has to be after um, after completing an action through the right click context menu for an image. Okay, it's a pretty long summary, but anyway. Um, the example was for doing a crop for an image, but this actually happens for any action like flipping a shape or changing the anchoring or whatever. And it's, it's only seen on calc. And then we might go looking at the meta box. So let's type cursor. We have mouse cursor, box, and enhancements. Sounds nice. We'll take it. Box field. Okay, I think that's enough. And then status to new. And then have to write some poetry in here. I'll paste my master version info. Okay, I think that's fine. So this was an example of not finding a duplicate. But I fortunately found something that we can use uh, in the actual duplicate finding situation. So here we have quite a fresh report, unable to type my, uh, okay, so the summary is a bit wonky, but the point is that you're in impress, you type some text, you select the text, then you go into the sidebar properties and focus in the font family uh, field or the font size field, and then you hit Control A. And instead of selecting the field content, it selects the whole text box content in the canvas. So this is 
obviously a very recent regression and I will do some searching so if, if we look at this uh, it talks about the sidebar so we might try it like this font and sidebar but we don't find anything interesting so actually what we need to do in this case is do a more greedy search so only for font now obviously we're going to find a bit more than a couple i will sort them by the changed we have 60 open bugs but because this is uh, quite obviously a fresh regression we can look at the latest ones so here we see immediately something interesting font size fields and other text boxes keep losing focus well that sounds very familiar and actually we have another one here font size input loses focus unexpectedly while changing font size of objects tabbed interface what so let's look at this one it's also for seven and um, yeah create a new presentation select some text click the font size button type in a number and yeah it, it the focus switches back to the selected text and edits it and there the reporter says it might only be a problem with linux so just like this one is on linux and i have tested this this only happens with the gtk3 interface it does not happen with the KDE framework backend or the fallback X11 backend. And this one is interesting because it um, says that it happens with the tabbed interface, but I believe this is the exact same issue. The reporter has this video displaying the bug. Yeah, yeah, waving that mouse cursor. Right on. So what what should we do now? We have one report that this about tabbed interface mm, so it's probably not very accurate because it's not limited to that one this is the oldest report this is from july and this this one where i started what is from october so as this older report seems to be pretty much fine I will leave it open and I will copy the bug ID and let's close this newer one status to resolved duplicate of the older one and let's do the same for the bug that was about the tabbed interface remove this whiteboard thing and then let's attack this one font size fields and other 
Just wondering if this summary is accurate. I guess so. So I'll, I'll just throw in a GTK3 at the end of the summary. I'll type GTK3 in the blocks field because it's an alias for this uh, metabug. I'll write repression in the keywords. Write bye bye sec request in the keywords. So someone can bisect it later. And um, yeah. Oh, actually, I should uh, refresh this page because I did duplications. Yeah. And uh, operating system should be Linux, obviously. Let's set status to new and reproduce only with GTK3 and I guess it's fine. Yeah, here you can see my duplications. Okay. Then the next topic was how to do some interesting custom searches in Bugzilla. So, let's have a look. I'll just show a couple. <laughs> okay, so yeah. This custom search is very powerful. It has this show advanced features, which we will do. And um, searching in Bugzilla can sometimes be a bit tricky. Um, in the case when we don't want something uh, included in the search, we should use this not checkbox in the custom search with the advanced features. So if we try it like um, summary should not contain the string meta for the meta box. Then we can search or Maybe just add another one. Then we can say version. Uh, matches regular expression. So you can use regex, regex piece here. So we can search for a specific version or starts with six and then has point one. I have to escape the, the point because it's a regular expression. Um, this this uh, pattern. And now I can search. Okay, yeah, we had the impress component here, so we didn't get many reports, but here we can confirm. Yes, the version is 6.1. Very nice. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, and then another one. I'll just, I'll just clear this real quick by clicking on the simple search and then back to advanced search. Mm. We could try searching by change history. So how about we do like this statistical investigation? How many bugs were changed to fixed or reports were changed to fixed between uh, two weeks and now? So in this case, we actually should not use the status for the change uh, parameter, but the resolution. And here we type change to fixed. And between, we can use a relative search term here, like 14D for days. And if I used M, it would be months, and Y, it would be years. And let's put the resolution to fixed. So we are looking at uh, bugs that are still in the fixed status. So here we see 76 bugs were changed to fixed in the last two weeks. That's amazing. Isn't it beautiful? Okay. Uh, then we might move on from this bug category to documentation because Bogdan was also interested in that, how to use some tools in order to work on documentation. And I thought we might look at the help content a bit. So I thought to look at some open patches from Seth Jacqueline. And here we see he has four open patches against help. And Seth is actually doing all his help editing directly in the Garrett web interface. And I can show it. Here we see he has done some work on updating the help of PDF export. Here we can see the changes that he has made. The old version is on the left and the red one indicates the red color indicates that something has been changed if the shade is darker it indicates something uh, that was removed and uh, here on the right side we have the change stuff in green so he has added a note a heading and a bunch of other stuff. So I could go into edit mode in sets patch. I will click edit. And then if I click this file, I go into the editor. I'm not going to mess with this, but I'm going to copy all of this and show you the XHP editor. This is something that uh, Olivia Allo has developed and it is kind of mandatory if you're doing your editing in Garrett directly because it has these tools for checking the correctness of the XML markup. So if we click now no errors found anywhere, no duplicate IDs. So why is it saying something about duplicate IDs? Well, all of these 
ID equals something. All of these values have to be unique on a single page. It doesn't matter uh, when we're talking about across the whole help system. But if I now copy this ID so it occurs twice and say check XHP, it says found duplicated ID attributes. Oh my gosh. And it even has this render page functionality, so you get a rough idea of how it will look like. Well, it's pretty good. And um, if you want to observe the... Oops. The current um, help file can copy this uh, bit of the file name and the path then go into the online help and change the file extension to HTML so here we see how it looks like at the moment so the XHP editor is very convenient for people who do not want to go through the trouble of setting up a Git repository on their own computer and setting up the Garrett um, patch submission process uh, because it allows you to, to really see the preview of how the stuff works and, and check any errors and you can even test these different uh, operating system specific uh, conditions because we have these conditions where the keyboard shortcuts are different on, on Mac OS compared to Windows or Unix. So Mac OS might use command something and Windows uses control something. And there are also these conditions based on uh, which LibreOffice application is, is being talked about. So the, the help um, has these internal like if statements in, in how to change the content. Yeah. And um, if you want to get into this, the wiki has a lot of useful information. It has this uh, convenient brief description of a help file, which is uh, summarizing the typical contents of an XML help file. And there is also this more massive reference for the whole thing. So you can see in the table of contents it has a lot of stuff just pages and pages of these definitions Whoa. and this is also useful if you're going to do editing in the web interface we have this open grok search online and there you can pick help for the project then in the full search type whatever maybe like accessibility okay it's even auto completing and there we are searching through all the files in the help system you can view these files very beautiful Moi, xml great so yeah I guess that's uh, enough that topic and I don't really have uh, well actually Bogdan was also interested in in the guidebook so how can someone from outside come up with suggestions for the writer guide for example and this could simply be an email to the documentation mailing list so if you have some grammar mistakes or stuff that is obsolete just please send an email to the documentation list 
and if if you want to like really get into it and um, do edits directly in some draft files then then you should introduce yourself on the documentation list and um, register on our single sign-on system and request credentials for the next cloud where you will be added to the documentation team and you will get access to all the folders which contain these uh, work in progress files then you can participate you can join the the calls where the documentation effort is discussed regularly and you can join the chat channels on telegram or irc okay so any questions does bogdan have more questions for me Ogdan is thanking me. Great. He's happy. <laughs> he got so much information that he has nothing on his mind at the moment. And uh, I don't know if we have... Okay, we have Olivia in the channel <laughs> i don't know if he has anything to add or if he has time to chat about anything yeah thank you for um <laughs> uh, yes uh, uh, this is olivier speaking uh yes thank you for presenting uh, uh and and pushing for using the um, the help uh it's important yes to um let's say um uh, you you saw the, the 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 help editor and probably you say well that's a bit a bit clumsy but uh, uh it it deserves a little bit more development and it's pure php with uh, some knowledge of html so if anybody wants to really to uh, uh stretch their uh, his fingers on on php uh it's it's very very short editor we, we use um, a code mirror for the edi edition and very sing simple transformation to get it rendered and uh, there is a lot of things to do we we have not yet uh, fully tweaked it but uh, it's it's an open project whoever wants to uh, spend some time in developing this editor is absolutely welcome that's it right and obviously i mean set Jacqueline has has done dozens of patches for help so it's really a proof that that you can use this web editing uh, workflow quite well and and the xhp editor it, it it works even for more complicated stuff i don't know heiko had some pretty ambitious question show how to find code pointers <laughs> well uh <laughs> i'm not really sure how i would approach that i mean that's a good question <laughs> yeah yeah because i mean in general you could just say that you're dealing with some part of the application and it usually has some user interface uh, you should pick some unique string that you are seeing in the interface somewhere along the process and then you can grep through the whole libreoffice code base you can use the open grok interface but it's usually maybe more quicker to do it on your local machine just grep for those strings that you find and and then you have to explore the code like uh, maybe working your way um, downwards in the hierarchy to to find stuff that uh, is is responsible for for these things that you're investigating does that make sense yeah i think that's the way to go uh you look for the 
a string in the dialog, for instance, and then you find the UI file, then you look for the CXX file link to that UI file, and then you can already set up <clears throat> breakpoint there and work from there. That's yeah, and, okay. and Christian has, has also good point. You can do searches in other places. You can search in Bugzilla and you can also search through the git commit message history so that that's also a good place to to find stuff related to the topic you just have to use your imagination to find the right keywords and there you will see actual uh, like minimal code changes you don't have to look at the massive amounts of text you can see what was changed exactly related to some some topic yeah so i don't know if no one has anything else to add or ask then i think we might close the session i i think we used quite a bit of this available time Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. It was really interesting and uh, very productive. Uh, yeah, I think uh, when I started, I, I would have uh, loved to see a presentation like this. So at least you have something to, to get your feet uh, wet. Yeah, yeah. And I'm actually thinking that I should do, do this like live streaming of, of bug triaging uh, regularly and invite these new people that I am training to, to attend these sessions, like maybe an hour, hour of bug triaging at a time, have to pick the right time for the time zone, maybe early in my morning, so some West Coast Americans can join and whatever.